Good morning, everybody, and welcome to What's Hot on the Open here at MarketStream.Live. My name is Joseph Cusick from the Cusick Group Securities Offered by Moneyblock. It is Friday, March 24th, 2017, and the American Health Care Act is now being debated, or it's going to be starting debating in about uh, 15 minutes. So with that being said, we know that uh, we're going to be headline-driven all day. Uh, there's going to be a lot of congressmen, senators, who knows. Uh, one thing that you, you all will learn, if you haven't already gotten it now, politics and markets don't mix well. Um, and we're seeing that. Overnight, uh, we had the president come out with an ultimatum that basically he said, pass the AH. CA uh, or Obamacare states. Uh, he also said that uh, he will move on to tax reform and his uh, head of the White House head of budgets, the budget director Michael Melvaney said that uh, each one of these bills stands on its own. So the um, ramifications of not passing the health care bill by Congress at this juncture He's saying that that's not a necessary component for going to tax reform and getting that done. Um, also, too, folks, by the way, um, this is part of a mini-series. And I say this only because if it, in fact, does get passed today in Congress, we're going to be going over this when it goes to the Senate. Um, it, this is going to be, again, a, a, a very difficult bill to get through without having... Um, a lot of debate, uh, as it should. Um, but that's fine. That's why we have a political system and the greatest one in this, on, on this earth. So let's get started and take a look at the markets. Let's get away from the politics for a minute. And right now, the markets are bouncing back quite nicely. The Dow Jones is up 26 right now at 20,682. Now, it is coming off of its best levels, but you can see it's going to be in a tight range for most of the day. Um, it is below its 20-day moving average right now. It has for the last three sessions. So with the Dow below there, the short-term bulls, any kind of headline that comes out could shake them even more than it already has. Uh, let's watch that. The area that you're going to watch that is resistance right now is 20,770. That's a level that needs to be retaken if the short-term bulls are going to be uh, back in control. Now, uh, from an intermediate term, uh, 20,474. That's the area of next support. Um, any negative headlines, any ramifications from either the bill not being voted on, which is anticipated to be voted on this afternoon, somewhere between 345 and 5 o'clock Eastern time. So we could potentially have a vote before the markets close or it's going to be after hours. This could, if, if it actually gets voted on today. Um, Taking a look at the S&P 500, it too is coming off of its highest levels from the open. Uh, it is now up $4.80 at $23.50. The S&P is again uh, uh, below its 20-day moving average. As I discussed, folks, this is the battleground. This is where, as a strategist, you have to determine, now that we've spent basically three sessions between the 20 and 50-day moving average, this is where you got to start thinking, do I add to my current positions if I'm already in, especially if I'm a bull, uh, or if you're not a bull, where do I start adding and how do I add, especially if there is risk of a challenge of a downside move? Go back and take a look at the strategy now sections um, here at MarketStream.Live. I've gone over some strategies that you can deploy, like laddering in short puts that will get you into long stock if, in fact, you're looking to build a long core portfolio. And my premise is this, folks. You can trade, but you're only going to use a small portion of your capital for trading. You need a core portfolio. And the markets are inherently um, bullish, right? They will inherently go up. They, not everything goes to zero because if everything goes to zero, we don't have a market. So you look at your core portfolio, which is long, and then that's when we get into the discussions of diversification. So with this being said, this is the battleground that you're looking at in both the Dow and the S&Ps. Um, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ got above. As a matter of fact, it opened up above that battleground right now, that battle line. Uh, the 20-day moving average, which comes in at 53.59, that is now support. Uh, it is at uh, 53.81, up 26 points. Large cap tech has been performing very well right now. Um, 
in this market. What has been under pressure, though, is um, small uh, is uh, biotech. Uh, IBB is one that we've discussed. Keep an eye on this. This could be at a b- breaking point, especially dependent upon what happens with these healthcare reforms, and especially with the fact that there's a lot of discussion about pricing and all of the other components of this sector that could get very volatile. That not only will weigh in on the um, the drug sector, but this is also going to be in the technology sector, a very small, smaller component than in the tech sector, but I wanted to notate that. Um, also the Russell 2000. This one broke and it was showing weakness well before any of the major indices, well before this AHCA um, debate uh, started and uh, so forth. This is where we saw weakness. This is telling me that unless we continue to see uh, three things. One is progress in reforms, right? Whether it's healthcare, tax, um, trade, it doesn't matter what it is. You need those domestically centric policies to start to get established so that then we can then see the justification for what we're anticipating is future growth prospects. The PMIs are continuing to come in very strong, not only here in the United States, but also globally. We saw in Europe and in Asia, these purchasing managers indices are coming in high. What does that mean for you as a consumer or as an investor? That means that there's an anticipation by producers that there is going to be growth. Um, and so they're, they're gearing up for that. And that continues, maybe not at the pace that everyone would ideally want for the type of growth that we're anticipating, but they're still strong. Um, the Russell 2000 still has not gotten back to its 20 and 50 day moving average. I think that uh, this is a battleground, one that I'm going to watch very closely because I think that small caps are the sectors and are going to be the names that are going to take uh, any type of rally uh, in the near future. Uh, to new levels of new heights. Otherwise, it's going to be a laggard and weakness. Um, Taking a look at volatility, volatility has come off this morning uh, pretty significantly, uh, down about 4% at 12.5 on the VIX. This is the cash VIX. Uh, I'm going to watch this one very closely. Obviously, I'm not too surprised that volatility came out after the move that we saw. I think cooler heads will start to prevail. This is still very low implied volatility, but as I had noted and discussed, this 1250 level is going to be a battleground. That was resistance that has been very difficult for the volatility markets uh, to uh, continue to stay above. And what is volatility? Volatility is the measure uh, or the forecast of potential violent moves, or in other words, it's a fear index. If people start to get concerned that the markets could move either up or down very violently, you'll see this number, this VIX number, start to go up. As a matter of fact, uh, a challenge of 13, 13 and a half is really what I'm looking for. A challenge above there means that the, uh, the environment has changed and become a lot more um, anticipatory of, of violence in the near future. Uh, Taking a look finally at a couple other markets, the dollar. The dollar, uh, a little bit weak this morning at 99.72, but muted. Been in a range. Um, with this dollar basically firming up, global currencies continuing to move to the upside. Um, this has given a little bit of a chance for uh, commodities like crude oil to start to look to bounce. Even though we've had some bearish inventory data out this week, uh, and there's just uncertainty uh, about uh, whether or not the consumption is going to catch up with the production. Uh, needless to say, West Texas trading down at the lows. This is a critical level. A break now of this you know, 47.80, 47.70 level, that starts to put into play areas like 45 and 44. Uh, you're also seeing a little bit of weakness in the Brent contract. This is the contract that comes from the Middle East, Africa. Watch this, uh, especially if you start to see headlines coming out of OPEC uh, and, and so forth about production or lack of production cuts. Will some of these OPEC and non-OPEC nations start to cheat? Uh, that's going to impact as far as uh, crude and specifically Brent. And then the bonds. The bonds, uh, they've been moving to the upside. The short end of the curve, uh, the two-year is down right now in price. Yields are up ever so slightly. But the 10-year and the 30-year, they continue to uptick. Um, you have the 30-year the up uh, the most 
out of the two bonds. You have the 10-year basically flat and the 30-year. Watch this very closely. This is going to be your red flag. If we continue to see strength in bond prices, in other words, yields coming down, that's telling you that there still is a protection trade or uh, basically individuals aren't and, and institutions and traders are not uh, plowing into this market on the security side. Watch that very closely for the remainder of the day. All right, folks, that is it right now for what's hot on the open. A little bit longer, but we have a lot of headlines, a lot of stuff going on. Join me the, at 1.30 Eastern time. I'm going to be covering some strategies that you are going to be able to utilize to build uh, core portfolios. And we'll talk about that at 1.30 Eastern time. See you then here at MarketStream.Live.